The phrase, up yours, has a colorful history as an expression of disdain or contempt towards someone. Originating in the mid-20th century, particularly in British English, its exact inception remains somewhat elusive. The phrase is figurative, employing up as an intensifier and yours to refer to the person being addressed. It's often accompanied by a hand gesture, most commonly involving extending the middle finger upwards, a gesture with a long history of being used to insult or provoke. While the precise origin of up yours is unclear, it likely emerged organically as a colloquial expression reflecting a speaker's desire to dismiss or belittle the recipient. Its usage is typically confrontational or adversarial, conveying a palpable sense of hostility or contempt. Over time, Up Yours has transcended its British origins and become recognized in various English-speaking regions globally. Despite its vulgarity, the phrase persists as a potent and blunt means of expressing strong negative sentiments towards someone, often in moments of frustration, anger, or defiance. Its enduring presence in colloquial language attests to its effectiveness as a colorful and emphatic way to communicate disdain or rejection. While its origins may remain somewhat obscure, its impact as a linguistic tool for expressing contempt is unmistakable. The phrase bugger off is a colloquial and somewhat vulgar expression, commonly used to dismissively tell someone to leave or go away. Its roots trace back to British English, where bugger has been utilized as a mild swear word or insult for centuries. The term bugger has a complex etymology. It originally derives from the Latin word bulgaris, meaning Bulgarian, which in medieval Latin was used pejoratively to refer to heretics. Over time, it evolved to become associated with the act of sodomy or anal intercourse, particularly in legal and religious contexts where it was used to condemn or prosecute individuals engaging in such behavior. The phrase bugger off, likely emerged as an extension of the original term, with off added to intensify the command to leave or depart. This formulation became popularized in British English, reflecting a characteristic bluntness and directness in communication often observed in British culture. While the phrase may have originated in Britain, it has since become widely recognized and used in other English-speaking regions as well. Today, bugger off is considered a relatively mild and informal way to convey annoyance or impatience with someone's presence, suggesting a desire for them to depart without necessarily expressing outright hostility. Despite its informal nature, bugger off retains a hint of rudeness or irritation, depending on the context and tone in which it is used. It is often deployed in casual conversation or humorous exchanges as a straightforward and direct way to express the desire for someone to leave. The phrase drop dead is a linguistic weapon, forged in the fires of contempt and wielded with the intention to wound. Its origins harken back to a literal wish or command for someone's immediate demise, a chilling sentiment that speaks to the depths of human anger and hostility. Over time, however, this phrase has transcended its literal meaning, evolving into a figurative expression of profound disdain and rejection. When hurled as an insult, drop dead becomes a verbal sledgehammer, capable of shattering the fragile veneer of civility and exposing the raw nerves beneath. It is not merely a dismissal or a rebuke. It is a declaration of war, a repudiation of the target's very existence. In the moment of its utterance, it serves as a stark reminder of the speaker's power to inflict harm, both emotional and psychological. The potency of drop dead as an insult lies not only in its literal connotations, but also in its ability to shock and provoke. It is a linguistic lightning bolt, striking with ferocious intensity and leaving its mark on the psyche of its intended victim. By invoking this phrase, the speaker seeks to assert dominance, to assert their superiority, and to assert their right to inflict pain upon the object of their scorn. In essence, drop dead is more than just a collection of words. It is a manifestation of the darkest impulses that lurk within the human soul. It is a reminder of the capacity for cruelty that exists within us all, waiting to be unleashed in moments of anger or frustration. The phrase, bite me, is a colorful, colloquial expression often wielded in moments of heightened emotion, particularly frustration or anger. While its precise origins are not meticulously documented, 
it likely emerged as a visceral and confrontational retort to dismiss or challenge someone's words or actions. The phrase carries with it a sense of defiance and defiance, essentially inviting the other party to engage in an aggressive or hostile act. It could be seen as an evolution from more literal forms of conflict resolution, such as physical altercations where biting might occur. Over time, however, bite me has transitioned into a more metaphorical usage, losing its literal implication of violence while retaining its forceful tone. When someone utters, bite me, in response to a provocation or insult, they're not literally inviting someone to sink their teeth into them, but rather expressing irritation, annoyance, or exasperation. In contemporary language, bite me is often employed in informal settings, especially during arguments or moments of tension, to assert dominance or assert one's boundaries. It serves as a direct and impactful way to dismiss someone's remarks or actions while also conveying a palpable sense of irritation or anger. In essence, Bite Me stands as a potent example of how language evolves to convey complex emotions in succinct and vivid ways, capturing the intensity of human interaction in just two simple words. The phrase, screw you, has roots in both literal and figurative meanings. Literally, the term screw refers to the act of fastening or securing objects together using a screw. This mechanical action involves twisting or turning, implying forceful action or manipulation. Figuratively, screw you emerged as a confrontational expression, conveying contempt, anger, or dismissal towards someone. Its exact origins are not precisely documented, but it likely evolved over time from various slang and colloquial expressions that convey similar sentiments. One theory suggests that screw you may have originated as a more polite alternative to the more explicit and vulgar phrase, fuck you. By substituting the word screw for a harsher expletive, individuals could express their frustration or disdain in a manner considered less offensive. The phrase gained popularity and became entrenched in informal speech and popular culture, particularly in situations where individuals wanted to assert dominance or express their displeasure towards another person. Whether used in heated arguments, casual disagreements, or as a general expression of contempt, screw you serves as a direct and forceful way to dismiss or insult someone. Throughout its history, screw you has retained its potency as a confrontational phrase, often employed in moments of anger, frustration, or defiance. It has become a staple in colloquial language, finding its place in various forms of media, literature, and everyday conversations as a powerful expression of disdain or dismissal. The phrase shut the hell up is a vivid, direct, and emphatic way of instructing someone to cease speaking or to stop talking in a manner that's causing irritation or frustration. Its origin, like that of many colloquial expressions, is difficult to pinpoint precisely as it likely emerged organically from the evolution of language and cultural influences over time. The addition of hell to the command shut up serves to intensify the directive, imbuing it with a sense of urgency, seriousness, or even anger. Hell is often employed in informal language as an intensifier or expletive, amplifying the emotional impact of a statement. In this case, it emphasizes the speaker's desire for immediate silence or cessation of conversation. Expressions similar to shut the hell up have likely existed in various forms throughout history, reflecting humanity's universal experience of dealing with noisy or bothersome individuals. Over time, these expressions evolve and adapt, influenced by factors such as regional dialects, cultural trends, and popular media. While it's challenging to pinpoint a specific moment or source for the emergence of shut the hell up in its current form, it's clear that it has become a ubiquitous part of contemporary vernacular commonly used in informal settings to convey frustration, annoyance, or impatience with someone's incessant chatter or irritating remarks. Whether uttered in exasperation, anger, or jest, the phrase serves as a succinct and forceful means of asserting one's desire for silence or an end to unwelcome discourse. The phrase, you do the math, encapsulates a world of meaning in just four simple words. Its essence lies in the art of deduction the challenge to engage one's intellect, and the invitation to unravel the complexities of a situation.
So why has this phrase become a staple of colloquial speech, resonating across diverse contexts and conversations? At its core, you do the math embodies a call to action, a prompt to think critically and independently. It's a verbal nudge, urging individuals to take ownership of their thoughts and decisions. Imagine a scenario where someone presents a series of facts or circumstances, leaving the listener to connect the dots and draw their own conclusions. In such moments, you do the math serves as a rhetorical flourish, encouraging intellectual engagement and active participation. But its significance extends beyond mere problem solving. This phrase is imbued with a sense of empowerment, affirming the capacity of each individual to navigate life's complexities with confidence and clarity. In a world inundated with information and opinion, you do the math reminds us of our innate ability to discern truth from falsehood, to weigh evidence, and to make informed judgments. Moreover, the phrase carries a subtle undertone of challenge, suggesting that the answer or solution is within reach if one is willing to invest the effort. It's a declaration of faith in human intellect, an assertion that we are capable of rising to the occasion and unraveling the mysteries that confront us. Yet, you do the math is not merely a directive. It's also an invitation to curiosity, inviting individuals to explore the nuances of a situation and uncover hidden insights. It encourages a mindset of inquiry, fostering a spirit of exploration and discovery. In essence, you do the math embodies the essence of intellectual autonomy, urging us to embrace the exhilarating journey of thought and discovery. So the next time you encounter this phrase, embrace the challenge, seize the opportunity, and embark on a journey of intellectual exploration. After all, in the grand equation of life, the most rewarding solutions often emerge when we take the initiative to do the math ourselves. The phrase F-U is an expletive, a highly offensive and vulgar expression used to convey intense disdain, anger, or hostility towards someone. Its usage can be traced back centuries, with the word F itself having origins in Middle English and possibly even earlier languages. While the precise origin of the phrase is uncertain, it has become ingrained in modern English slang as a potent way to express strong negative emotions. The potency of F-U lies in its bluntness and directness. It is a verbal weapon, wielded in moments of confrontation or deep frustration, where speakers seek to assert dominance or inflict emotional harm upon another person. The taboo nature of the phrase adds to its impact as it defies social norms and boundaries, often leaving a lasting impression on those who hear it. In everyday usage, F-U is typically employed as a sharp retort or response to perceived insult or offense. It serves as a verbal rebuke, signaling contempt or rejection of another's actions, words, or intentions. Whether uttered in a fit of rage or delivered with calculated malice, the phrase carries with it a potent charge of negativity, capable of escalating tensions and causing emotional harm. However, it's crucial to recognize that the use of such language is widely considered impolite, disrespectful, and inappropriate in most social settings. While expressions of anger or frustration are natural, resorting to profanity like F.U. can often escalate conflicts and damage relationships. Effective communication and conflict resolution strategies often involve expressing emotions in a more constructive and respectful manner, fostering understanding and resolution rather than further discord.